So, this is a very unassuming street in the city centre of Liverpool. This is the main entrance to the secret bunker which helped turn the tide of the war. So, uh, welcome to Western Approaches headquarters. Hi, my name is Dean. I'm the Managing Director of Big Heritage uh, and we've um, just signed a, a deal to take over Western Approaches. So we're stood in the middle of the operations room, which is probably the most iconic room in the building. Um, for anyone who you may have visited in the, in the 90s or in the last few years, you'd be surprised to see that huge big map table that was once here uh, is no longer there. Uh, sadly, as, as, as Hollywood and as interesting as it was, it was um, never in the building in the first place. It was put in the, in the 90s. Um, and part of our, our job, our role really, is to put this building back um, as authentic as possible to get, give people the feel of what it was really like down here. So the map's gone, the floor was damaged by it, so we've had it replaced and asphalted by the company that we think pro probably laid the asphalt down in the 40s, they're still going. Um, and we're just about to kind of start finishing the final phases of refurbishing this back to exactly as it was based on photographic and, and archival evidence. Uh, probably one of the most uh, iconic and uh, underground hidden secret rooms in the whole city of Liverpool. So this room uh, was a Royal Navy uh, cabin um, where Royal Navy officers were able to monitor the, the ongoings in the main ops room. Um, this shows you just a good example in this room of the challenges that were faced. So. We have a lot of this stuff on display which looks really inf informative and you know historical and technological but it's all historically nonsensical for this time period it's 60s 70s equipment so we're going to have to be obviously taking this out but then what we have discovered locked away and kind of discarded in back rooms as if it was rubbish was original floor plans from the 1930s and 40s which are gold dust for us so we've got these out yesterday, they're all about to go get conserved, digitised and placed with the records office, you can take care of them. It's a miracle that they have survived the way they were thrown away, but it shows you the two sides of the operation from the stuff that looks shiny and brilliant but is historically inaccurate through to the dual brown maps which are exciting us because these are you know, the, real, the real history of the building and how it was made. So we've got years and years worth of work of sifting through this and digitising it and correcting some of the inaccuracies that are in there to put the place back um, to, to, to what it should be, which is one of the you know, most important buildings in the UK associated with the Second World War. So what we have are a mishmash of old and, and, and modern. Um, and obviously what we have is these boards which had interpretation text on and these modern kind of wired lighting. Um, and we're going to strip all that back because underneath are the original 40s desks that people were working on. So we're going to restore as best we can um, the damage that's done underneath them and get them. So you'll be looking through the window exactly the way that the people in this Royal Navy cabin were looking through out at the main map. Uh, the map wall was where it was. It's again not in, a, it's not in its original condition. Um, so we're going to be able to take that and redo that based on photographic evidence and put that map perfectly in the... Uh, in the right position of where it was and eventually open up the other map room which is the other side of that wall and let the public see that for the first time ever um, so it's an incredible uh, amount of work slow process but slowly slowly getting through with new information to get this place back back as it was Uh, so this room is part of the quarters of the commander in chief so this is his office his desk um, we're going to be putting this back as best as we can as how it was um, and sleeping quarters through there um, so max horton will be able to wake up even in the middle of the night or any time of day and look out onto the ops room uh, to see the current situation of the update there close his curtain when he's in his pajamas uh, he was notorious for working late into the night actually so i'm, I'm sure uh, his uh, shadowy figure was spotted by the workers down there quite a lot. Um, we want to get rid of the barriers as much as we can eventually. We want to take these down and make the whole place you can walk around as if it's just uh, just been left while people go on, on a coffee break. Um, so that's a big challenge is removing all these barriers to of the public accessing it. And readdressing things like the maps, were they the right maps, were the, were the maps at home we'll be looking at. 
uh, the things on the desk exactly on, on photographs. We even found some 1940s golf balls that were in his photographs because he was a keen golfer. Uh, it'd be interesting to know that he played at World Birkdale virtually every day before he come into work. So it would uh, be great to get his uh, his golfing scorecards perhaps. Um, and just tell a little bit more about some of the individuals down here, not just Horton obviously. Um, there's an incredible amount of Wrens working down here who've done the bulk of the work, so we're really keen to tell their story both as a group uh, and as an individual uh, young girls who were, were done so much to turn the tide of the war through their, uh, through their intelligence. So um, as well as just the building, it's important for us to tell that social history through the stories of the people who worked here. So lots of research, really interested if the public can help out, if they know anyone, our relatives who worked in the building, uh, or stories of relatives past in the building, um, it'd be great to have those stories interpreted and, and, and shared with the rest of the public. So we um, have on the, our plans from the 90s a corridor, um, but we found in the 40s that corridor was much, much bigger. Um, so we took away some panelled walls and found this gem of a room hidden behind. So this would have been, a, I think, a cipher or a coding room. Each individual desk has got a lamp, the stations above there, the colour, the paint, it's all exactly how it was. Um, so this is, a, again, it's a myriad of hidden rooms and locked doors. That, um, something like 50% of the buildings probably not been seen before by the public. So our aim is to, through time, put them back into the rooms as exactly as they were, what they were used for. Um, bit by bit the public will be able to see more so every time you come back to, to Western Approaches HQ there'll be something more to see and more of a story for us to tell so it's exciting stuff so these are beautiful because these um, tubes as they come around they have a light bulb and each one would have been an individual desk um, so hopefully within the next kind of 18 months two years there's a big job to do but these will be restored the lamps will be like lit once again and the stations put back exactly as they were and what they were used for during the 1940s. Um, the long restorations, because there's so much to do, but it means that visitors can come back six months, 12 months later and see parts of the building that they've never seen before, um, and possibly ones we haven't seen yet, because uh, I'm sure there's a few more secrets yet to discover down here. So this is a street, uh, under a street. Um, these rooms were... Um, ripped out from what they originally were, um, communications type rooms. Uh, and in the 90s, they put a bombed out street scene in here. Um, and we felt that that's actually not a bad way to go to have something that explains the blitz and what life was like for people in Liverpool uh, up, up, up in, the, in the real world outside the bunker. But we're in the middle of a big refurb. We've re completely redone the streets. There's pavements, there's lamps, there's separate buildings, there's a pub, there's a dress shop, and that's gonna help to explain to people of all ages really the um, how life went on in Liverpool um, and how kind of things happened, the blitz and how people carried on with their normal lives. So you can come down here, you can go and buy some sweets from the sweet shop. The, we're going to be having events where you can uh, have street parties and uh, maybe a couple of drinks out of, out of the pub, the ship in which we've got in the corner there. So this is something that's inside the building but we're not going to be ref referring to this back to how it originally was but it adds a new dimension, something a bit more entertaining and something that uh, tells a wider story of, of Liverpool uh, during the war. So I think one of our big challenges is to uh, ensure that we're getting people's personal memories and personal experiences of the Second World War and, and bring that down into the building, whether it's in the street scene or throughout the, the whole exhibition. Um, for instance, we know that there was a First World War U-boat engine that was down here that was used as a generator. It'd be great to know more about that because it's disappeared. Um, any stories about that? Um, were you bombed in the Blitz? Did you live in Liverpool in the Blitz? Um, can we inform some of our shops what went in here, what we're going to put in here? These are going to be changing like shops and streets do through time. We're going to change, add, adapt. And we're hoping to be able to do that um, through people's memories and through people's additions, um, which they bring to us. So. Um, our contact details are on our website and if you've got uh, any memories you'd like to share with us, I'm sure uh, they'll help enrich the building and, and, our, and the public's understanding of it through time, so please do get in touch. So we open to the public on the 27th of October. We'll still be working in here, we'll still be putting things right, so you'll have to kind of look around and see what our builders are doing. Uh, you can find out all the information, hours and opening on our website, which is westernapproaches.org.uk. 
Uh, we're also on Twitter, which is at West Approaches, and we're on Facebook as well. You can search for us on Facebook there. So contact us there, and we uh, look forward to um, welcoming you uh, to the, the newly refurbished and, and reimagined Western Approaches HQ. Mm -hmm.